On today's Jerusalem Dateline, world leaders weigh in on what they think should be the future of the Palestinian state. Prime Minister Netanyahu standing strong on Israel's military goals. And on the ground in Israel, former Vice President Mike Pence witnessing the devastation and bringing a message of support. Plus, Iran rattles the saber as Israel increases its readiness in the north. All this and more coming up on this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken returned to Israel on his tour of the Middle East. The visit comes as Israel and the U.S. spar over the fate of Gaza after the war. On Tuesday morning, Secretary Blinken met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The Secretary on a diplomatic mission meeting with leaders in the Middle East to discuss the war and the future of the region. Meeting with reporters before his arrival in Israel, Blinken outlined what he says they agree on about Gaza's future after the war. First, that Israel must have peace and security. Second, that the West Bank and Gaza should be united under Palestinian-led uh, governance. Third, the future of the region needs to be one of integration, not division and not conflict. And fourth, for that to happen, we need to see the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. However, that's a sticking point for Israel. While the U.S. and others support a Palestinian-led Gaza, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and his government are against it. While the debate over Gaza's future continues, the growing tension between Israel and Lebanon may direct the course of the war. Blinken and others are trying to de-escalate the low-scale war between Israel and Hezbollah diplomatically. But Benny Gantz, a member of Israel's war cabinet, says time is running out for diplomacy, since nearly 100,000 residents of northern Israel can't return home. Concerns rose on Monday following the assassination of Wassam al-Tawil, the highest-ranking Hezbollah official to be killed since October 7th, and a nephew of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. Also on Monday, Hamas fired the biggest barrage of rockets since the beginning of the year. That as Israel's military campaign continues to uncover Hamas's terror infrastructure. On Monday, the IDF released footage of the largest weapons production site found in the Gaza Strip since the beginning of the war, used to produce long-range missiles capable of reaching northern Israel. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence recently visited Israel to show his support for the ongoing war with Hamas. He explained why it's important for America and Christians to help during Israel's darkest hour since the Holocaust. Take a look. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, words fail. Uh huh. Yeah. We were just uh, the Kfar uh, Aza. We met former Vice President Pence following his visit to some of the Israeli border communities attacked on October 7th. We sat down in the bombed out children's unit of the Barzillai Hospital in Ashkelon, just miles from the Gaza border. I must tell you that I, I've been to war zones during my time as vice president, during my time as a member of Congress. But the sights that I saw today, the aftermath of that terrorist attack on October 7th, and even a site like this, the ongoing war on Israel by Hamas, it just was pure evil. Pence came with a message for the United States and its closest ally. These are dire hours mm -hmm. for Israel. And I think it's, ex it's so important that the United States make it clear that we are with Israel today, we will be with Israel tomorrow, and we'll be with Israel every day until the threat of Hamas terrorists from Gaza is eliminated once and for all. He also emphasizes that the show of support must be widespread. I believe the United States needs to make it clear to other actors in the region, whether it be Hezbollah in Lebanon to the north, or most especially uh, to the mullahs in Tehran, that uh, the United States will be here for Israel and that we will be prepared if there's an effort to widen uh, this conflict in any way. The Biden administration is trying to actually limit maybe some of the fighting going on in Gaza. How would you respond to some of the limits that the Biden administration is trying to put on Israel? I just don't accept it. I was in Washington, D.C. on 9-11, and um, America did what we believe needed to be done 
taking the fight to the enemy in Afghanistan. And I remember the way our allies stood with us and they didn't question how we were going about bringing those to justice that had attacked our country. They just stood with us. And I think Israel deserves the same now. A lot of people right now are talking about the day after and the Biden administration is talking about a revitalized Palestinian authority that would take over in Gaza. Your thoughts? I think we're still waiting for the Palestinian Authority to condemn what happened on October the 7th. I think those considerations will be proper for the government of Israel to make. And I think we should leave those to the elected leadership uh, here in, in Israel and we'll support their determination. In January 2018, Pence addressed Israel's parliament. The miracle of Israel is an inspiration to the world. And the United States of America is proud to stand with Israel and her people as allies and cherished friends. As I said in that speech, I, we, we stand with Israel because her cause is our cause, her values are our values, and her fight is our fight. And I really believe that uh, uh, this is a moment uh, where that, um, that relationship uh, has been more important than ever before. When we come back, threats from Iran and the blame game escalates as Israel strikes terror targets inside Lebanon. Threats of revenge against Israel are rising. Iran is promising that the Jewish state will pay after two explosions killed more than 100 people in the city of Kerman. And Hezbollah is warning that Israel will be punished for the assassination of a top leader in Beirut. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has that story. Iran blamed Israel and the U.S. for two explosions that killed more than 100 people at a ceremony in Iran to commemorate Revolutionary Guard Corps Quds commander Qassam Soleimani. Soleimani was killed four years ago in a U.S. drone strike. In front of a crowd shouting death to Israel and death to America, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi called the blasts a barbaric act against innocent people. I warn the Zionist regime, without doubt for this crime and the other crimes you commit, you will pay a price that will make you regret badly. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller says it's too early to know what was behind the twin blasts in the city of Karaman. The United States was not involved in any way and any suggestion to the contrary is ridiculous. And number two, we have no reason to believe that Israel was involved in this explosion. The explosions came one day after a top Hamas leader, Deputy Commander Saleh Aruri, was killed in an explosion in a Hezbollah-controlled neighborhood of Beirut. With respect to the development yesterday, I will say that uh, al Aruri was a brutal terrorist who was centrally responsible for the attacks of October 7th, as well as um, other attacks against innocent civilians leading back to well before October 7th. Hamas blamed Israel for Aruri's death, and Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah called it a very dangerous development and promised punishment for it. Hezbollah continues to launch attacks against Israel's northern border, and Israel is responding, striking Hezbollah strongholds inside Lebanon. The White House says it's trying to keep the war between Israel and Hamas from spreading. Of the force posture changes that the president has ordered in the region has been designed to prevent an escalation or widening or deepening of this conflict. Um, as we've said before, we don't want to see it widen beyond Israel and Hamas. And again, we're going to keep working with partners in the region to prevent that from happening. On a visit to the northern border, after Hezbollah's ongoing attacks, the Israel Defense Forces Chief of Staff says Israel is prepared to deal with the Iranian-backed terrorist organization. Based on my impressions, we are in a very high state of readiness in the north. I visit here often. I think our readiness is at its peak. There is a lot of expertise, great capabilities and high morale. We are in very high readiness in all sectors, and we are currently focusing on fighting Hamas. Iranian opposition activist Vahid Beheshti says he's devoted his life to standing against terrorism. He's urging Israel and the West to fight the terror groups, but not to ignore the head of the snake, the Iranian regime. Their first principle of Iranian regime is this. 
an elimination of the state of Israel since 44 years ago. And they've been really active about it. Look how many proxies they have been created around Israel. Of course, we have to eradicate Hamas completely, Hezbollah completely, other terrorist group completely, but mainly we have to go to the root of the problems. Beheshti, who spoke in the Knesset, Israel's parliament, tells CBN News the Hamas massacre of Israelis on October 7th proved to the world the brutality and barbarism that's in the Iranian regime. We have this big cancer in the Middle East. We need the proper surgery. Of course, it's going to be painful. It's going to be bloody, sorry. But to, to get cured, we need to go to the root of the problem. And that's Iranian regime. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. The gentleman in our last story, Vahid Beheshti, made history last week as the first Iranian opposition figure to speak in front of the Knesset. Here's more from Julie Stahl's interview. Vahid Beheshti, welcome to Jerusalem Dateline. Thank you for having me here. It's my honor. So you are an Iranian opposition activist. Tell us what that means. Tell us what you do. If you, if you identify yourself as Iranian opposition activist, that means your life, any second, any minute is in danger. Mm -hmm. So every day you feel this is going to be your uh, last day. And because of the level of brutality of this regime and the level of barbarism of this regime, and you... Uh, the people of Israel experienced that firsthand on October the 7th, who they are. So why did you come to Israel? Yesterday was, I was in, in Temple Mount, and that's reminded me our great history. 2,600 years ago nearly, Prophet Cyrus the Great freed the people of Israel from slavery and gave them opportunity to rebuild their temples. We have lots of common interests. Most important, we have a common enemy, and common war, which we have to win together. That's why it's so important for me to be here. And you, and uh, yesterday was a historic day. You spoke at the Knesset, the first Iranian to ever speak at the Israeli Knesset parliament. What did you tell them? It was really uh, special yesterday. My message was basic, it was very simple. First, I brought the message of Iranian people. I said to the leaders of Israel, I, lead, I said to the people of Israel, the people of Iran, message is this, we love you and we need you. And you need us. So let's work together in this common fight. We have to go to the root of the problem, which is Iranian regime. My message was this, don't be afraid to hit and target IRGC bases in Iran. Don't be afraid to hit and target nuclear sites of Iranian regime in Iran. Don't be afraid to hit the house of high officials in Iran. That's how you can give support to Iranian people. So you think Israel needs to keep fighting Hamas, Hezbollah? They need to keep up their battle? They have to. There is no any other solution. How can you communicate with terrorists? How can you communicate with someone who's Mm, who their principle is an elimination of the state of Israel. We stand on the side of people of Israel. Wow. We need to work together. Just imagine that. Let me wrap up with this. Imagine that. We have two options. That's what I said last night uh, in the Knesset. I said, imagine this brutal evil regime with this capability gaining access to nuclear weapon, which is not far from... Mm -hmm. The other option, we have the chance of how, imagine, what we can build in the Middle East together, the great nation of Israel and great nation of Iran, without Iranian regime and its proxies. So we have two options in front of us. I think the second one is... <laughs> It's much better. It's much better. <laughs> yes, Vahid Beheshti, thank you so much for joining us. On thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, explaining the challenges of the war in Gaza and the threat of escalation in the north. This weekend marked three months since the Gaza war began. The IDF says it now has proof Iran was mentoring Hamas 
and the IDF explain why fighting is so complicated. Here's more from Julie Stahl. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is making it clear Israel must continue its battle in Gaza until it achieves total victory. We must not stop the war until we complete all its objectives. The elimination of Hamas, the return of all our hostages, and the promise that Gaza won't pose a threat to Israel anymore. Over the weekend, IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari explained some of the challenges of the war in a briefing to the nation. He says one of the main goals is dismantling Hamas. Hamas battalions use a complex underground system with infrastructure to manufacture weapons, war rooms, command and control centers, and the capability to launch rockets from above and below ground. The terrorists move between different areas in the Gaza Strip using this infrastructure, allowing them to do so covertly. Hagari said there are five objectives, eliminating Hamas commanders, ground combat against the terrorists, gather intelligence from computers, maps, communication devices, locate and destroy rockets, weapons, and sites where they are manufactured, and destroy the underground infrastructure. This is the Gaza Strip. It covers 365 square kilometers and its population is over 2 million people. This is the northern Gaza Strip, where we began our ground operation and have been fighting for the past three months. In the northern Gaza Strip, Hamas had two military brigades with 12 battalions in total, consisting of about 14,000 terrorists total. He said Israel has accomplished its goals in northern Gaza and is now turning its attention to southern Gaza. Gaza. Israeli troops located a 320-foot-long strategic tunnel shaft leading to a weapons production site. The IDF says their forces found proof that under Iranian guidance, Hamas terrorists learned how to operate and build precise components and strategic weapons and gain technological knowledge in the field. They shared images of what they said was a rocket engine and a Hamas-developed warhead of a cruise missile and Hamas wants its ideology passed along to the next generation. In an interview with NBC's Meet the Press, Israeli President Isaac Herzog revealed the discovery of a document detailing Hamas's plan to host and train children in summer camps to hate Jews, promote religious extremism and violence, and make them the terrorists of the next generation. It's a brochure, which is a directive by the commanders of Hamas as to how to manage summer camps for children in order to disseminate the values of jihad. It says it clearly, to disseminate the values of jihad and the values of the resistance, meaning terror, and how to make it a militarized society. And U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has been traveling throughout the Middle East before arriving in Israel. He's expected to press for a shift to lower intensity fighting as he warns that the fighting could spread beyond Gaza. Israel is indeed warning of another war in the north as Hezbollah marked the three-month anniversary of the war by stepping up its attacks. Israel retaliated, striking what it called significant Hezbollah military assets in a compound used by Hezbollah's surface-to-air missile unit. And a Lebanese security official says an Israeli airstrike has killed a senior Hezbollah commander in southern Lebanon as the fighting near the border heats up. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Up next, safety in the midst of chaos. How CBN partners are working to rescue Israeli families from Hamas rockets. Israelis near the Gaza border live in fear every day of rocket attacks from Hamas. CBN partners are helping families escape danger and find some peace of mind. Take a look. The Iron Dome missiles exploded very close. Everything in the house was shaking. Yafim and his family live outside the mandatory evacuation zone near the Gaza border, but they quickly realized they were still in danger. One day there wasn't even a siren, we just heard the sound of rockets. And we stood in the corridor in the house. We didn't even manage to get out of the house. The walls started vibrating and we are vibrating too. We heard the sound of breaking glass. The missile hit our neighboring entrance. Community leaders encouraged them to leave. 
We didn't want to because we love our home. It's our home. It's hard to leave. It is unclear when all of this will end, when to wait, how long to wait. After weeks of heavy rocket bombardment and combat near their home, Yefim and his wife chose to go to Elat to rest. For a few days we want a distraction because the atmosphere is oppressive. I see when the child is scared. The wife worries about everything. I had to do something, but you can't do anything. Thanks to support from donors like you, Yefim and his family are safe away from the fighting. Everyone is getting much needed rest, including their three-year-old daughter. She brings joy. She started to rejoice. Back in Ashkelon, she started to shut down. She had never been like this before. She always started to sleep like this. She sleeps here peacefully. Her hands like this. It's quiet here. Moral support is felt. Volunteers spend a lot of time with the child. Thank you very much because we're able to feel this world again where rockets and planes are not buzzing. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. And remember to continue to pray for the safety of IDF soldiers, all those caught in harm's way, and for the safe return of all the hostages. Today we want to leave you with Psalm 3. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May the, your blessing be on your people. Well, that's from Psalm 3. Well, I'm Chris Mitchell. We'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.